Hi, this is Larry London, and welcome to Border Crossings here on The Voice of America. Today, we are joined by some rock and roll superstars who've been around for 29 years now, and they have their first new album out in about four years. It's called Threads. We are excited to have with us on The Voice of America the members of a band that I'm sure you know, and I'm sure the music you've heard before, we'd like to welcome the Verve Pipe to The Voice of America, Brian Vander Ark, and he's surrounded by several members of the band, some new members of the band. We'd like to welcome the guys and gal to uh, The Voice of America. Nice to have you. Thanks for having us. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Can you introduce us to the members of uh, The Verve Pipe today? This is Channing Lee. Hello. And this is Lou Musa. Hello. All right. Now, Channing and you have collaborated on some of the songs. So this is a first for you, Brian, I guess, in the 29 years for the Verve Pipe. It is, yes. Channing and I collaborated on every song um, uh, for lyrics and melody on this album. Yeah, so it's a very exciting, uh, very exciting approach for me. Now, it's, what it's made... Some of the pressure. What, what made you decide... For pressure, what made you decide to do something different after all these years? You've had success. What, why, why do something different? I mean, honestly, I was running out of things to write about. I've written and recorded over 100 songs, and it's like I didn't want it to be, it's going to become derivative if I mention the same themes. And, uh, and Channing is a fantastic vocalist and uh, songwriter in their own right. Very storytelling uh, type of uh, songs, and I thought that's right up my alley. Uh, we both honor the lyric, uh, always, first. And I thought, well, I'll give her some of these ideas that I have, and then she'll come back, and hopefully it'll work. And it did. You know, I give her the skeletons of ideas, and she'd come back with a full song. It was it was amazing. It worked. Mm-hmm. It definitely worked. It worked. Yeah. So, Channing, are you a Michigander as well? Are you? I am now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I transplant. Yes, exactly. I moved up here, um, I guess, about seven years ago from Nashville, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love Michigan now. Mm-hmm. Full, I've, I've gone full Michigander. <laughs> full Michigander, full on. I'm from Michigan myself. I'm from Oakland County, you know, Southfield in that area. But, uh, and I know the band originally formed, you know, your brother's back in the group. Yes, and, yes. and you and Brad started the, a, a group called Johnny One Eye. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, close. Johnny with an eye. Yeah. Johnny with an eye, something like that. One eye is a whole different thing. Johnny, one, yeah, right. It's another story with it's a punchline. A, <laughs> but you started a band when you were, you know, growing up, I guess, in the Grand Rapids and East Lansing area. So, I mean, he's back. He decided to come back now. Brad decided to come back. Yeah. Um, he wanted to take a bit of a break. And I think it was a break that we all wanted for a while. And then uh, just recently, I would say in the last month, he, uh, he called me up and he said, hey, what if I came back? And I said, absolutely, brother, come on back. And, uh, and it's been heaven, having him back in the band. Heavenly. And you guys, having grown up in the home of Michigan State University in East Lansing, you did a show a couple of weeks ago, I read, that was in, in uh, hostile territory at the University of Michigan. It was. What was that like? Well, the great thing is, is that all of the Michigan State people buy the tickets to our show in the hostile area of Ann Arbor <laughs> before anybody from uh, from uh, Michigan can buy them. So nobody from Michigan can make it into our shows because Michigan oh. State <laughs> acts the points. <laughs> That's great. That's great. well. It's a, it's a it really is a thrill to have you on because when I was I grew up listening to that, you know, I hate to say grew up, but I, I grew up through the radio ranks in Detroit radio back, you know, in the day playing your music. I worked on CSX and I worked on some of the radio stations that was playing your music back in uh, 96, 97. I was on the air in Detroit at that time and uh, your first album, Villains and, and stuff like that. You know, I, it was a thrill for me to be playing the music then and to have you on the show now. And I've seen you on TV and in the movies and, and, doing all the acting things. So it's great that you guys are still making music. And how is this album, the new one, Threads, different from the last album? How has the band, The Verve Pipe, evolved, you know, musically? I think musically, um, we've changed a bit. The sonics have changed. Where uh, this album in particular has got a little bit more of the uh, harmonies on it uh, than the previous albums. It's also got some orchestration on it. I mean, this was really the album where we kind of 
we let the music be the music and we embraced whatever it, whatever it was in any way we could without thinking about putting out another album like Villains where the guitars all had to be distorted and that kind of thing. So really the sky's the limit uh, sonically. You know, I, I look at it like a, there's, a, there's a landscape involved. I think the albums before, when you go to a movie theater and the curtains are open this wide until the main feature and then the curtains open up a little bit more, that's the way this album feels to me. So we've opened the curtains just a little bit more on this album. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Very exciting time. So if you wouldn't mind doing some music for us, you know, we'd love to have you do some live stuff. Uh, what's the first song you're going to do? This is a song we wrote called No One's Gonna Break This Heart Again. All right, the verb pipe. A part of you is lost and never found. When love lifts you, then it lets you down. Suffering reality, feel the weight of gravity. It grabs you and it pulls you to the ground. And all the voices echo in your head. The resolutions you had left for dead. Once again, your heart, it breaks. You always make the same mistakes, expecting something different in the end. No one's gonna break this heart again. No one's ever gonna get close again. There's never gonna be a reason to pretend. There's never gonna be another bitter end. Until this heart of glass is a heart of stone. Buried out there somewhere in the great unknown. A solitary diamond to be left alone. And no one's gonna break this heart. Oh, oh, oh. And everything seems so intertwined. The friends we had in common left behind. Nights are getting longer, the desperation stronger. You're looking for some words, something kind. The part of you that you thought slipped away comes alive to live another day. When it's unexpected, the heart is resurrected, and here we are meeting half the way. No one's gonna break this heart again. No one's ever gonna get close again. There's never gonna be a reason to pretend. There's never gonna be another bitter end. Until this heart of glass is a heart of stone. Buried out there somewhere in the great unknown. A solitary diamond to be left alone. And no one's gonna break this heart. Oh. Oh. Oh.
I love it. You guys sound great. Really, you guys sound great. The Verve Pipe, I love it. That's off the new album, Threads. And uh, I mean, you guys are called alternative rock. I don't know what that means. Because, you know, to put that label on, you guys sound great. I mean, the music just is music, and it sounds great. It's universal. Uh, could you describe your music? I mean, it really. I mean, alternative rock, what does that mean? It doesn't, you know, at this point, I think that, you know, when you label something, it's, it's really for the ease of the listener to know, to put you in that area and say, okay, I know what this is. But, uh, but I feel like songs are songs. And we've always looked at songs that way. When we recorded Villains, the, the big album for us, you know, there was an intent, uh, we intended to make it sound current, which was alternative rock or grunge back then with all the heavy guitars and whatnot. But when you strip all that stuff away and you just play the song on an acoustic guitar or on a piano, I still think they're great songs. And I think that that's the important thing. That's what we, that's where the bar is for us to just write a great song and worry about how we want to produce it and what the label is going to be for it later. Right. You know, outside of the U S they don't use labels. If you, you know, the BBC and, and Europe, well, they don't have formats. It's a little of everything. It's just great music. Well, when I grew up in the 70s and 80s, you know, at least in the 70s, Top 40 radio had country on it, it had rock and roll on it, it had blues on it, it had race yes. on it. It was all, all the way across the board. It's just not the same anymore. That's right. And, and you did a Villains live album, too. I mean, that was your first, I think, an only live album. It it's is. Pro- it's about time to do another live album. I agree with you. You know, the Villains Live album, uh, th- th- this is connected to what we were just talking about. You know, we decided that we were going to do it in an acoustic way. So we played acoustic instruments. We did it live in front of people. And we did the album start to finish with none of the distortion of the heavy guitars and all that. We just did uh, we did it the way that we... Well, there were there were some electric guitars on there. Okay, take it easy. Just take it easy. Come on, come on now. <laughs> Well, you know, the the uh, sounds really good where you are. I don't know, maybe the, the you in a cabin or something because the wood and the look this, there. Uh, this is Lou's studio. He's got yeah. it he's together here. Yeah. yeah. Really, really good sound. Really, really good sound. You know, that brings me back to home. You know, it reminds me of uh, Upper Michigan. You know, it's, uh, it's got that feel. I mean, you may not be in Upper Michigan, but it, it certainly reminds me of the old days and. Just imagine, that there's, uh, just imagine there's three foot of snow outside right now. <laughs> That's all you need, you know. <laughs> That's all you need. But uh, anyway, you guys sound great. You really, really do. And so I also, you know, you, you ventured into children's music, too. And so that's got to be memories there, a lot right? of great <laughs> memories, a lot of great memories. <laughs> I mean, how do you how do you balance that? You know, I mean, writing for kids has to be and you took your some of your own stuff and you, you reversioned it for kids. And you also were quoted as saying, I read an interview where you'd like to do Pink Floyd's The Wall, but do it for kids. Well, we've been working on that for about seven years <laughs> yeah, now. That's a, that. that's a long haul, <laughs> but it's still, it's still going to happen. And I'd still think it's brilliant, <laughs> whether parents like it or not. Uh, no, from the kids stuff, you know, we really wanted to be able to make an album uh, where we could, you know, talk about the shenanigans that we got into when we were kids but also we can use whatever instrumentation we want. Uh, for example, if we were to put an oboe on a rock and roll record, it would be pretentious. People go, oh, come on. But you put an oboe on a kid's record, then that one kid that plays oboe is going to go, oh, my gosh, there's an oboe solo on this record, you know. And it's so fun. <laughs> Look at Sgt. Pepper's. I mean, that album is practically a kid's record. I mean, it's 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 the lyrics and everything are fantastic but that kids uh, kids love and that's what we that's what we tried to do now the kids shows were different we got exhausted from playing the kids shows because they are not easy <laughs> not easy kids shows you got to be on for an hour straight on 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 like 11 a.m yeah at 11 a.m yeah it's a good point too so and uh, we said enough of that so no more kids shows <laughs> we need lots of balloons and lots of confetti things to keep them amused okay. so what you know I, i've gotten a couple emails when i mentioned on the air that you guys were joining us people said what is a verve pipe so i have to ask you what where does that name originate it's a good question our first guitarist his name was brian stout and he was in the band for four months and he just demanded that we call it the verve pipe for whatever reason and then he left us (laughs) and you know a few months later he left us with this terrible moniker that we have to say over and over at least back in the day we had to repeat it over and over because people and they still get it wrong 
you know. The Verve Pipe. It's an interesting name. That's an interesting name. But, you know, it's a name that people remember because it's different. It's it's one of those names that does resonate, does stick with you forever and ever and ever. Well, so and you like, guys have had, you know, pardon? Think of it as uh, uh, Verve and Pipe is like vigorous stability somehow. I like it. It works. It Whatever, it works. <laughs> and you have toured the world. I know you played some of the most recognizable music festivals on the planet. You know, played Lollapalooza. You, you know, recently Austin City Limits was just, the festival took place just recently. People have been talking about it a lot. You guys headlined that as well. And you've played some, some of the big music festivals. Do you like playing the 50,000 people crowd type venue? Or do you prefer the smaller intimate venues? Or do you like them both? Honestly, I like the variety personal, personally. I like the variety of being able to put on a different show for a different crowd. You know, when you get people, when you get a crowd that's over two or 3,000 people or bigger, they kind of suck the energy out of you. You know, when you get a crowd that's under a thousand, they feed you this energy and it's great. And that's what I miss when we play the bigger places. However, it is nice to get on a big stage every once in a while. And even though Lou might be, you know, a hundred yards away over there, you know, we still enjoy playing. I prefer know. that. <laughs> <laughs> How about playing 50,000 eight year olds? How about that? No, I can't take more than 100 eight year olds. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking with the Verve Pipe, Brian Vander Art is with us here on the show. And this is a group that has uh, put out many, many hits, Photograph, and, and you know, this goes on and on and on, multi-platinum superstars. And so you have been a part of the business through the evolution of time, through the changes. You've seen when the albums were the way to go, and today it's now streaming is the way to go. Right. And selling singles is the way to go. And the business has changed. You know, yeah. it, it, do you like the way the business is today compared to when you did get to record in, in the garage or, or there, are, there are, there are ups and downs to it all. The downside to the streaming is, is that, you know, I, you know, the freshman gets played a 4 million times and we get a check for $200, you know, really? Yeah, I know. It's awful. It's awful. But oh. the upside, the upside is, is that, we can put out as much music as we want. We don't have to wait on a record label. There's, you know, the promotion is, is, uh, uh, ongoing, for instance, we release a single and then two weeks ago, and then we release another single now, and then release another single in a couple more weeks. And now we have this connectivity all the time with our fans, where before you put an album out, you'd have three singles, and then you would disappear for two years and tour. That's just not the case anymore. And the fact that Channing and I, and Lou as well, we like to write so much, and we like to get the material out there. It's a very freeing uh, atmosphere. So mm. that's a good well, Would you guys do another song for us? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Is this also on threads? This is on threads as well. This is uh this is gonna be the new single in two weeks, like I just said. <laughs> oh great, great. We've got an exclusive, the new I single. Love. Actually, this is the first time I think we played it live. So let's excellent. Let's I'm excited. Oh, Thank you. This is called what are we doing? Uh oh, oh Love will find Love you will again. find you again. <laughs> Channing, you want to describe the song really quick too? I mean, yeah, it's just sound really quick. What do you think? Really quick. Uh, it's about basically letting go of all of your past and you will open yourself up to love again. And it should also be in every Drew Barrymore movie. Ever. <laughs> Adam know. Sandler's got to be in it too. <laughs> stone at the foot of a mountain I've got no love after the fall brought me to my knees with all the used to be's and used to be's mean nothing at all was lost like a breath in the wind All that love come and gone All the hell I raised in my younger days All 
that dark before the dawn It's all the same Whatever happened to what's his name Whatever happened to him When you can leave it all behind, love will find you again. She came back like a bird in the spring. Back like a bird, song of a little wing. A little song of a little wing. How could it be right there in front of me? I was on my own. Love to be alone till I heard that little bird singing to me, singing a melody. It's all the same. Whatever happened to what's his name? Whatever happened to him? Free your mind when you can leave it all behind. Love will find you again. Pipe here on the Voice of America, and it is from Threads. Why did you choose to call the album Threads? Is there a uh, song called Threads? No, that was actually Channing's idea. It comes from uh, it's from the first song in the album called Forever Reaching. It was based off of this Japanese legend where we're all connected by these crimson threads and we're connected to someone else who's going to play a major part in your life. So, in a way, everyone is connected. By these threads, so and we was... felt like every song was connected in that way yeah. too. Mm. Channing, was it intimidating to work with uh, Brian? What to, I mean, you know, first time in twenty nine years to oh, oh write God. with him for the very first time on a project. I mean, here's somebody who's been set in his ways, and then to to collaborate with somebody. That that is true. <laughs> I've I've known Brian for a long time, and I feel like when we did first write together. Um, it was very easy. Very easy. It was, it just was very natural and easy. And there, I don't think there was a lot of pressure. There's, there's mutual respect. And I think we're always putting the song first. And um, yeah, I, it, you know, there's other intimidating things about being in the band, but that, no, I, I think that was, that was a natural thing. Yeah. Mm. And that, it, you know, it must be exciting for you guys to finally put COVID in the rear view mirror. I mean, that everybody's able to start planning touring again. As a band, it's been miserable for the last couple of years. I got wood real quick. Here. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I mean, you know, we all get our vaccines. We all, you know, are, are moving forward and, and the numbers are heading in the right direction finally. And so it's gotta be good for you and exciting for you. And, and I don't know how COVID's impacted your lives and affected you guys, but well, you know, thankfully we can move forward. I can tell you this, that if it weren't for, I think if it weren't for COVID for us, we wouldn't have spent this time creating the album, which is what we did. So we tried to, I guess I figured that the universe was telling us it's time to create. When you get 40 shows cancel and you're at home, you're like, well, what do we do now? Well, it's like, all oh, right, we're musicians and songwriters. Let's make an album. And so we did, we made this album. Right. And it does, unfortunately, affect a lot of people's incomes. You know, I mean, the tour, the, the people who support you, the trucks that got to move you from city to city and the people who set up the stage and the lighting crew and the sound crews and the people who 
have no other source of income. Uh, yeah, those are the hardest hit. Those people are the hardest hit for sure. And they can't really stay home and create like we can create. You know, we're creating content and I and my heart goes out to those people, especially. Yeah, well, it's great that everybody's back to work or getting back to work. And are you guys going internationally? Is this tour coming up going to include some out of the U.S. visits? We're 100% international. <laughs> we are going to be for sure. Where are you going? Let's let the worldwide audience tune in now. <laughs> I can pull anything out of the air right now because we don't have anything booked yet. But Oh, uh, nothing booked. Nothing. All right. Well, if people are tuned in, since the album is inspired by a Japanese concept, maybe Japan might be you know interested right now to bring one. some people. <laughs> Number one is go to Japan. Yes. There you go. There it is. The album works there. Bring them in. Have you played Japan before? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have. Yeah, years ago. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so many years ago. But so fun. Oh, they're so hungry for music over there. I love it. Yes. That. Yes. Shinjuku yeah. is a great, you know, club area and whatnot. And so uh, they're very polite. Do you have play favorite places you like to play internationally? Because it's great when you can sing in a country that doesn't speak English, but yeah. they know all the words to your songs. Oh, it's so fun. You know, we the time that we, that I spent in Germany... Um, I was in the army and I was in Germany when I was in the army. And then I got to go back there as a rock star. And it was, there was nothing like it. And, you know, back then I worked on the border of Czechoslovakia. And then I got to go play in Czechoslovakia, you know, when it was free. I mean, you can't compare these experiences with anything else. I mean, that's just mm. awesome to me, so. And I read an interview that you had done where you talked about being a rock star and how in some ways you regret it. And so I wanted to ask the best part and the worst part about being famous for what it is you do. Sure. I think that the worst part I'll say first is the expectation. You know, you're there's, there's a constant expectation to be a rock star 24 seven. Every song has to be a hit. Every album has to be a hit. Uh, but the good side of that is that I get, you know, I can go to the local Chili's and get a table like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but of course it's your movie star fame you know and, and stuff like that you have any other roles coming up these movies that uh that you know nobody's really seen these movies other than you know rock star oh, yeah. rock star people have seen that that's a pretty good movie but i had three lines in that and for three lines i had to have a mullet for three months so i'm not positive that that was worth it <laughs> <laughs> all right well i know we've got one more song time for one more song Yes. And um, this song is today, resonates today, probably as much, if not more, than it did back in 96, 97, when it came out, reached number one, and propelled you to superstardom. Um, it's a song that deals with subject matter that maybe at that time people weren't ready to openly discuss, suicide, abortion, things that we're talking about openly today. Today in the news headlines, abortion, which has become a very hot topic in the news um, and suicide people are more openly discussing these things with you know Chester Bennington and and all the people that you know unfortunately took their own Robin Williams all the people in the last few years that you know mainstream entertainment people who've taken their lives so right I mean and I read where if you wrote it today it probably wouldn't get recorded yeah I mean I would be concerned that we weren't sensitive enough you know the way the song is kind of insensitive about it I think that's what made it controversial back in the day and that helped in its popularity but now I'm not positive that that some of the phrases would fly you know and I feel like if I could rewrite it for today I would rewrite it for today but you know what the way the song is written uh, brings so many great memories to people you know of that time and that's what's important to me. It's it's become nostalgia, and I love that. I love that about it. So there won't be any changing. Yeah, and the song resonates today, as I said, as much, if not more, than it did in 96, 97. If you re-released it today, I think it would back to number one again. So, uh, you know, if you would indulge me and, and sing The Freshman, I would love to hear that song again. This is, this is a song that was a big part of my life, a big part of my career. I remember playing it when it first came out, The Verve Pipe and The Freshman. Thank you, Lord. I was young, I knew everything.
for us for playing that song. That that's definitely one of the all time greats. You know, thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. I certainly appreciate that too. And having Channing on that vocal and Lou on the guitar is pretty nice. So. Yes, yes, absolutely. You guys sound great. Really, really, really. It sounds great. You know, to hear it acoustically, fantastic. Really, really, really. Boom! Brings chills up and down my back. I really enjoyed it. And so where were you when you heard that it went to number one? I mean, that's something that a singer never forgets is that when you get that call, it's your song, your first song, that to go number one. I happened to be in the offices of BMG, and we just found out that we knocked you two off the number one spot, uh, which I did not feel bad about at all. You know, I'm a big fan, but that was a nice, that was a nice moment, too. And my mom happened to be there with me at the time. You know, we were in a meeting and having a little celebration. And it was very nice. So. Wow. Wow. Outstanding. Well, before we go, because I know we're almost out of time, I wanted to give you a couple minutes just to say, you know, hi to the troops, because you yourself served. Thank you for your service to the country. Thank you for everything you've done, you know, musically and, and everything that you do for uh, people around the world, the, the music you give us, which gives people so much inspiration, so much hope. Thanks to all three of you and to the rest of the people in the band who aren't with us today. But you know, if you want to say something to the troops, I know that they're tuned in and, and you know, I they love your music. I absolutely do want to say thank you. Uh, thank you for your service, your dedication. I don't quite know what it's like for you now. I was in at a time that it was pretty easy to be in the military. I can't imagine what it would be like for you now. And, uh, and I certainly, we all certainly appreciate you. Well, thank you so much to the Verve Pipe. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Lou. And thank you to Channing. Thank you so much, Brian Vander Ark. Thank you guys so much. They are the Verve Pipe. The new album is called Threads. Please get yourself a copy. And I hope to have you guys in the studio the next time your tour stops in D.C. My name is Larry London. We've been talking to the Verve Pipe. Thank you for watching. This is Border Crossings on VOA TV.